All right, today we're going to be talking about DNA replication. And we just studied the structure of DNA. You all have to make a model about DNA structure. And today we're going to be talking about how DNA copies itself. Okay, here's the definition. DNA replication is the process of copying all the DNA in a cell. Okay, let's remember when it occurs. If we remember when this occurs, it occurs right here during the S phase of interphase. So remember, just to review, that interphase starts here at G1. That's when the cell is going to grow and do its normal things. And it gets here into the S phase. It's going to copy all of its DNA. That's the longest part of the, the of interphase there. And it goes into G2. That's when we get ready to do mitosis. Remember, this piece of the pie right here is when you take your one nucleus and make it into two nuclei, and you divide up those two copies of DNA. And then right here is where we get cytokinesis, and then we have two cells, and they both go into G1. They copy all their DNA, goes into G2. So we're going to talk about right here, how do you actually copy all of your DNA? Okay, here's some things you need to know, and then we'll draw a picture. DNA replication starts at an area of the DNA called the replication origin. And what the replication origin is, it's a sequence of DNA recognized by an enzyme. Remember, enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions for us. This is a sequence of DNA recognized by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. And it's got that word ACE right on it. And that means it's an enzyme. Okay. Once the DNA polymerase finds that replication origin, and we'll draw a picture of all this, the first step of DNA replication is unzipping the DNA strand at the replication origin. Unzipping is the breaking of the hydrogen bonds. So let me draw you a picture here. Let's just draw a line like this, and that'll represent the phosphate and the sugar backbone, it's called. And then we'll draw another one because DNA is double stranded. In the middle, is where we have, let's say we have like an adenine here. You guys know because of the base pairing rule, we'd have a thymine opposite it, and there'd be two hydrogen bonds in there. Let's say we had another adenine and another thymine, and there's a two hydrogen bonds there. Let's say we had another adenine with a thymine, and then let's just say we had a guanine, three hydrogen bonds. What matches up with a guanine? Be a cytosine. And let's just say we had a thymine here, two hydrogen bonds to an adenine. And we'll just kind of make up a sequence here. Okay, so let's take a look at this little sequence we made. This sequence is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This would be ten base pairs long. Because we have ten pairs of bases hooked together with these hydrogen bonds. All right? So let's say that DNA polymerase, let's say the replication origin is any time you see three A's with a G. So this right here would be our replication origin. It's just a sequence that DNA polymerase recognizes as the starting line. It's almost like if you're on the track team and you're going to run some event, you could start anywhere on the track, but you need to start where everybody else is going to start. So this right here is our starting line. This would be our replication origin, and that's all it is. It's just a, se a sequence of DNA that this enzyme called DNA polymerase recognizes, and that's going to be its starting line. And if you look down here, it says the first step of DNA replication is unzipping the DNA strand. Well, how do you unzip a DNA strand? Well, right here, you break the hydrogen bonds. It's kind of like how do you unzip a zipper? You break the little connections of the zipper. So we're going to break these bonds, 
And what's that going to let happen? It's going to let these two strands kind of fall away from each other. But they're still going to be held together over in this area because we didn't, we didn't break all of them. So this is still the zipper that's still zipped up, and this is the zipper that's been unzipped. Okay, so that's all we've talked about so far. Okay, so an enzyme called DNA polymerase is the main enzyme of this. It's going to do all the work for us. This is easy to remember. ACE means it's an enzyme, and what does it do? It's going to make DNA polymers. Okay, a polymer just means uh, a type of a big molecule. So they actually named this so it makes sense. We have an enzyme that makes DNA polymers. And this is going to do all the work for us. Okay, now let's get this written down, and then we'll draw a picture. DNA polymerase uses the base pairing rule. And we have to remember what the base pairing rule is. It's also called Chargaff's rule. And what the base pairing rule does is every time there's an A... You know, you'd have like the sugar phosphate backbone here. It brings in a T that's just kind of floating around and puts two hydrogen bonds. And then every time it sees a guanine, it brings in a cytosine, and it makes the phosphodiester bonds this way. Okay? And if there's a C, Chargaff's rule says you have to pair that up with a G, and it makes the phosphodiester bonds here. And finally, if there's a T, Chargaff's rule, also called the base pairing rule, says you have to put an A with that, and you make the phosphodiester bond right there. Okay, so that's what the base pairing rule is. And what do we mean by free nucleotides? That just means that there's uh, adenosine just kind of floating around. They have their little um, deoxyribose sugar attached to them uh, with the phosphate group. And they're just floating around. And whenever they're needed, the DNA polymerase grabs them and will pair them up with a T whenever they're needed. Okay, and you have all of your, there's kind of free-floating free nucleotides. So you'd have just thymine just kind of kicking around here. You'd have a whole bunch of guanines whenever they're needed. DNA polymerase can grab one and use it. And you'd also have cytosine just kind of kicking around. Remember, this is all in the nucleus, because that's where the DNA is. So you have all these just like pieces just floating around. So whenever DNA polymerase needs them, say we had another A over here, it would grab the T and plug it on right here. Okay? So let's draw a picture of this, and we'll see how this all works. Let me find a blank screen. Here we go. All right. So let me draw this really big. And let's say our original strand was A, T, A, T, C, C, G, A, C. Okay? So that you guys know that we'd have this sugar phosphate backbone here with all the phosphodiester bonds. And across from this, we would have T, A, T, A, G, G, C, T, G. We have two hydrogen bonds here two here, two here. C's and G's get three hydrogen bonds. A's and T's get two hydrogen bonds, and they get three. And then we would have that sugar phosphate backbone all held together with phosphodiester bonds running this way. So we said the first thing that DNA polymerase does is it's going to unzip the molecule. So let's just draw this like unzipped. So we would still have our A, but we've broken our hydrogen bonds here. And then we would have our T, and we've broken the hydrogen bonds here. Here'd be another T, because I'm just, I'm just redrawing this down here, but I'm drawing it all unzipped. So A, T. Oh, this should be an A. A, T, because I'm just copying it. And here we have a T unzipped with an A. Then we have C, C, G, A, C. And then we... We're kind of breaking our bonds here. So we have G, G, C, A, C. And what happens is DNA polymerase kind of comes in. It looks like a big blob. And it just kind of reads the strands. It says, oh, look, here's an A right here. It brings in a free T and pairs it up. Then it reads this next one, which is a T. Puts an A with it. Put your bonds. And pairs that up. Reads the next one. You got an A. It puts a T in here and keeps moving along. Okay? There would be another DNA polymerase down on this end, 
kind of doing the same thing. So this DNA polymerase is going to work this way using this top strand as a pattern. This DNA polymerase is going to work this way using the bottom strand as a pattern. So it says, oh, here's a, here's a C that's been unzipped. So it puts a G right there. Here's an A. It puts a T right there. Here's a C. It puts a G with it. Here's a G. It puts a C with it. And it keeps working this way. This guy keeps working this way. I think you can imagine what's going to happen. You're going to end up with two strands of DNA. Okay? And they're both going to look exactly the same. Once this, uh, this DNA polymerase here is all done, you're going to have something that looks like this. A with T, then you'll have T, A, T, C, C, G, A, C. And it would all have been all paired up because the DNA polymerase did all this work for us. G, G, C, T, kind of ran out of room here, G. So you'd have one that looks like this. And what would this one look like? Well, it would look exactly the same. You'd have A, uh, T, A, T, C, C, G, T. We have a G in here. And then here we'd have T, A, T, A, G, 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 A. So you get the idea. So these two strands are exactly the same. So we started with one strand of DNA, and we used each strand as a pattern, and now we ended up with two perfectly identical strands of DNA. That's what DNA replication is. All right, let me show you this video here. Okay, let's start this animation. And this is just that picture we drew, uh, but obviously a little bit neater. Okay, so we're going inside the nucleus. That's where the DNA is. There's our DNA strand. We click start here. And here we go. Here's our uh, double helix. And we pause it here. See, we're going to unzip it. So we've broken all the bonds in between. Let me back it up a little bit just to there. So we have like a broken zipper, just like when your jacket breaks. It's a big pain. That's what we have here. Here's a DNA polymerase here. Here's a DNA polymerase here. This one uses the, this open strand to make a DNA molecule this way. This one uses this open strand to make a DNA molecule, and it goes the opposite way. And they just put free nucleotides in there. They make the phosphodiester bonds, and they just keep going down the line. Take the one strand and make it into two. And this all happens during the S phase of the cell cycle. And then we end up with two, exactly the same. So we have three reds, three reds. A green and yellow, green and yellow. Green, red, green, purple, green. Green, red, green, purple. See, it's the exact same. We made perfect copies of our DNA. All right, let's come back here. All right, here's a giant picture of the same thing. You could pause the YouTube video here and take a look at this thing. But here we have this blobby DNA polymerase. Here's free nucleotides. It's going to work this way. And then we have another one here. It's using the other strand of this DNA that's been unzipped to work this way. Okay, and remember, just we just have a chromosome here that's unwound, and we're making a copy of it. Okay, I want to come back to one thing you need to write down here. I want you to write down this bottom bullet. Okay, each strand of DNA serves as a template or as a pattern to make the new strand. So take a minute and write that down too. Okay, if I didn't give you enough time, just feel free to pause it, because I've got to finish up here. Let's see. Okay, we watch that. Take a look at that if you need to. All right. You put all this up here, and you can pause it if you need to. DNA replication is called semi-conservative. Conserve means to save. Semi means half. Okay? And what this means is each newly formed DNA molecule has one old strain of DNA, as we call that the parent strand, with one new strand of DNA in it. We call that the daughter strand. All right, let me show you a picture, and then you can come back, and I can pause it and write down that definition. All right, skip all this, because this is not the way it works. All right, what this means is, 
Here's our old DNA strand, two darks. By the time you make it, each new one has a dark and a light strand. That's called semi-conservative. Okay, there you have it. That's DNA replication.